type of system. We can make that rather complex. And in this way, we can try to imitate uh, nature. This way, for instance. Or even this way. Or maybe in a nice way, I don't know. Well, still, that is um, machines. Machines that uh, mm -hmm. depend upon uh, human intervention. And in order to create something that it, we can say, well, that, that is a living thing, uh, the next thing we have to do is introduce the capability of interaction. Should I get this? Yeah. Uh, this is uh, just to show you a short film um, about. Like a pulsing blue shower, E. coli cells flash in synchrony. Genes inserted into each cell turn a fluorescent protein on and off at regular intervals. When enough cells grow in the colony, a phenomenon called quorum sensing allows them to switch from blinking independently to blinking in unison. Researchers can watch waves of light propagate across the colony, adjusting the temperature, chemical composition, or other conditions can change the frequency and amplitude of the waves. Because the blinks react to subtle changes in the environment, synchronized oscillators like this one could one day allow biologists to build cellular sensors that detect pollutants or help deliver drugs. Personally, I find this really fascinating um, to see what engineers can do. Uh, but still, the question is, uh, is, this, is this life? Well, yeah, this is life because we use exi existing microorganisms. But can they create those mi microorganisms from scratch? Maybe one day. Um, but just to show you where we are right now, uh, and that's maybe a little bit disappointing. Is, well, this is this is showing you uh, different layers of uh, naturalness or syntheticness, and at the bottom you find the completely natural system, what the natural systems are about, and what kind of functions there are in natural systems. On the top of it, there is the, the completely artificial organism. Well, there is a lot known about, of course, about the functions of natural organisms. And there is a lot known about, there is a lot of tools to, um, let's say, fiddle with these uh, properties of organisms. So there is a lot of uh, experience already in genetic engineering, for instance, at level two. <coughs> Synthetic biologies are mainly working on, on level three now, just uh, starting to develop uh, more uh, uh, tools and insights in uh, how synthetic genes can re be created and how they function. A little bit on level four, but that's about it. We are still at the level of, well, let's say, uh, more or less uh, natural systems, parts of it being synthesized, uh, but large parts not being synthesized. And I think we are still far away from it. Nonetheless, um, there is, in my view, something like a, a paradigm shift going on. And the paradigm shift is that we are moving from uh, reading the DNA, so trying to find out what the structure of the DNA is, what the combination of uh, nucleotides is, to writing and synthesizing it. That's an important step. Um, this is also taking us from a, a kind of trial and error approach to um, an approach that can be more or less uh, programmed with software, with like software. Um, it's taking us from uh, the modification of existing biological systems to the design and construction and modulation of new biological systems. I use 
the term biological systems here because uh, I don't want to put life there. It's, I, I prefer to talk in terms of biological systems. So there is something going on, um, which I think is important and has many consequences. Consequences that have been discussed by other speakers already. Then, uh, how can this be used? Uh, well, if you look at uh, what scientists say about it and what companies say about it, it can be used in many different ways. For instance, in, um, in the, in the so-called bio-based economy, uh, producing hydrocarbons, cleaner fuels, promises, like in the film, promises. Another promise, well, this is not really a promise, this is reality, this is making bioplastics with um, um, a synthetic metabolic pathway still being introduced in an existing microorganism. But it's, it's an important step. Well, there's many promises, of course, in the medical field, as usual. Uh, some things like uh, using bacteria for uh, drug delivery or uh, in stem cell research creating uh, systems to, um, uh, to enable the engineers to, uh, to create uh, specific stem cells. Or this one, maybe a bit futuristic, but I think there is some challenge here. This is uh, an attempt to grow uh, nerve cells from rats. And uh, if we can combine this with uh, microelectronics, so the microelectronic world and the biological world can communicate. Wow, that's really new. We can achieve that. But I'm not sure about it. What it does, anyhow, is uh, synthetic biology uh, has triggered a lot of debate among scientists, among uh, politicians, among NGOs. Um, and I thought this was uh, a comment in nature that was worthwhile, uh, that was worthwhile ending my talk with because it says something about uh, the impact of synthetic biology and its possibilities on the way we experience and the way we see life. In, in a sense, um, synthetic biology uh, may help us to remember that it's, life is complex. And it's not easy to, uh, to reconstruct life from scratch. It's not something you can make just like that because it's so incredibly complex. Um, on the other hand, um, if, we, if we got a more insight in what it's like to, uh, to create biological systems, we, we might garner some more insight in, uh, well, how, how life actually develops, how it uh, really works, and that it's something uh, we can be amazed about, uh, we can wonder about, um, but it's not necessarily this kind of divine spark that's there that's all of a sudden creating life, you know, that uh, life is something that gradually develops. And if we can recognize that, I think that may have an impact on the kind of ethical debates we have about uh, the use of uh, embryos, for instance, or embryonic stem cells. Thank you for your attention.